Lights, camera, action. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, still quarantined at home, and you're watching Gadget Match. It's a new month, it's April, and a new phone came in the mail. This time, it's Xiaomi's turn. This is our Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro unboxing and review. The Mi 10 Pro comes in a nondescript black box. I know you want to get on with it, but look what it says over here in the fine print. With easy access to the Google apps you use most. I don't know about you, but I call shade. Anyway, back to the unboxing. Let's lift up this lid. First up is this box with a SIM card ejector tool. I believe it also should contain paperwork, a clear jelly case, and a USB-C to headphone jack adapter, but none of which come in the review sample that Xiaomi sent us. Next up is the Mi 10 Pro. I have the Solstice Gray model, but it looks more blue than gray. Further inside, a USB-C to USB-A cable. And last but not the least, not just any charger, this is a 65 watt adapter that should deliver enough power to meet the needs of even a laptop computer. And now that it's out of the box, two quick points before we move on. One is good and one is bad. Let's start with the bad. The Mi 10 Pro costs just under a thousand euros, which is two to three hundred more than what we're used to paying. Xiaomi has never shipped headphones with any of its smartphones, and that was okay for phones that are priced low. But this time around, this phone is quite pricey, so you gotta call them out. On the flip side, Xiaomi has supported fast charging for a while now, but never included the fast charger in the box. So it's good to see this finally being addressed. Okay, rant done. Now we can get on with our review. This is the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. If it looks familiar, that's because its design resembles that of the Mi Note 10, which we reviewed in November. In case you need a refresher, the Mi Note 10 was the very first smartphone to debut with a 108 megapixel camera, months ahead of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. The new Mi 10 Pro also has a 108 megapixel sensor, although the similarities with the Mi Note 10 end there. The backbone of the Mi 10 Pro is Qualcomm's new flagship product processor, the Snapdragon 865. This is important because it unlocks some of the Mi 10 Pro's best features, 5G, support for Wi-Fi 6, and 8K video recording, more of which we'll get into later. The Mi 10 Pro comes in two colors, Alpine White and Solstice Gray. Both the Alpine White and Solstice Gray Mi 10 Pro have a matte metallic finish. It's a good size, slightly bigger than the Mi 9 or the Mi Note 10, as well as the Huawei P40 Pro and the Galaxy S20 Plus, which I think are the perfect size. But that said, it doesn't feel too big or too hefty. All the buttons are here on the right, but where you should really look is here up top. Look at these speaker grills. There's another set on the bottom where you'd usually find them. I've seen stereo speakers on smartphones before, but I don't think I've ever seen this kind of implementation. But how does it sound? More on that later. Also on the bottom, another set of microphones, USB-C port, and the nano SIM card tray. And while we're at it, let's start with the questions. Marcel from Germany asks, dual SIM? I hear the Chinese version is, but not the global version as seen here. More questions, this time from John Carlo of the Philippines. Are the speakers as good as advertised? Xiaomi says the dual super linear speaker and the seven magnet speaker design gives the Mi 10 Pro the best smartphone audio speakers. It comes with 15 volume levels. You can crank the volume up all the way without worrying about sound distortion or turn it all the way down and still experience a rich and deep sound. But don't take their word for it. Have a listen. DxO Mark says it's got the highest score of any smartphone audio they've tested. I'll admit audio isn't my specialty, but based on what I use the phone for, it's loud, full, and clear. Perfect for watching Netflix or following recipes on YouTube while in the kitchen. DxO Mark also says that the Mi 10 Pro is the best phone they've tested when it comes to audio recording. This part of the video is shot using the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro and the audio that you're listening to is also recorded using their built-in microphone. So what do you think of the audio and video quality? Let me know in the comments below. 
Xiaomi says the display on the Mi 10 Pro is the best you can find on any Xiaomi phone to date. Best on a Xiaomi phone? Yes. Best in the market today? Nope. Like a lot of phones that we've reviewed lately, it's got an AMOLED display that curves on both sides. I can see why Wilder in Peru asks, how do you feel about the screen? Do you think it's better than the OnePlus 7? They do look very similar. I wouldn't say one is actually better than the other, but between the refresh rate and the angle of those curves, they are indeed very similar. Regardless of my preferences, palm rejection on the Mi 10 Pro is actually pretty good. I haven't had any issues of accidentally triggering anything on the edges. This AMOLED display also has better sensitivity than ever. It sports a 90Hz refresh rate and a 180Hz sampling rate. The screen feels smoother when reading articles, scrolling through Instagram, or playing games. The Mi 10 Pro comes with Qualcomm's top-of-the-line processor, Snapdragon 865 with a good helping of RAM and storage. But with great power comes great responsibility and great cooling needs. The Mi 10 Pro comes with a large vapor chamber, a six-stack graphite layer, and heat-transmitting gel, which reduces the CPU temperature by up to 10.5 degrees, or about 51 Fahrenheit. So when you're playing PUBG or Asphalt 9 over extended periods of time, the phone stays cool to the touch. The Mi 10 Pro sports a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. During my time with the phone, it lasts about a full day and then some on a single charge. As you saw in our unboxing, the phone comes with a 65 watt charger, but the phone maxes out at 50 watts. True to Xiaomi's claim, it only takes about 45 minutes to fully charge its large battery. Now, the 65 watt adapter is actually power delivery compatible, which means I can also use it to charge my other devices like my Nintendo Switch, my iPad Pro, or even my MacBook Air. Xiaomi also sells this vertical 30 watt wireless charger for 199 renminbi. And finally, it also supports 5 watt reverse wireless charging if you want to top up another phone, a Qi compatible smartwatch, or your Bluetooth headphone. And now to the main event. Gone are the days where Xiaomi delivered on an impressive spec sheet, but not where it mattered most camera performance. On its 10th anniversary, the Mi 10 Pro's quad cameras are here to compete with what other brands have on offer. It topped DxO Mark's charts for a few months and was only recently bumped down by the Huawei P40 Pro. As you know, these are different times, so you won't get my usual travel photos. Instead, here are some photos I shot around my tiny apartment, on my roof deck, and on a quick trip to the supermarket. These photos speak for themselves. The Mi 10 Pro took excellent photos both during the day at night. But how does it fare versus other top flagships? That was the question most of you had. Pierre Olivier in Seoul asks, will it be able to compete with Huawei's flagship in terms of photo quality? While Farhan in India asks, is it equivalent to the S20 Ultra? If you take a look at these side-by-side -side photos, you'll notice all three phones shot great photos. Which one is better depends on your personal preferences. The photos from the S20, for example, tend to be more saturated on purpose. And not that most people shoot in full res mode, but for the sake of comparing, here are two full 108 megapixel photos from the Xiaomi and the Samsung phone. You'll see the Mi 10 Pro actually did better than the S20 Ultra when zoomed in all the way. Finally, I did a couple of low light tests. The first photo from my dimly lit kitchen turned out great across all three phones, but it wasn't till I turned off all the lights where the Huawei P40 Pro still showed it was the low light champ. Maybe it needed more light, I said. So I used an extra phone as a single light source, and here are the results. Not a bad job for the Mi 10 Pro. The Galaxy S20 Ultra just struggled to focus. Mr. Nice 117 asks, is the 12 megapixel portrait lens really necessary? That's a really good question. 
like. So one of the cameras on the Mi 10 Pro is a 12 megapixel portrait lens, which is also used when you select 2x zoom. It's supposedly comparable to a 50 millimeter portrait lens, which is one of my favorites actually. It's a great focal length when it comes to photos from the waist up as it's very flattering for the face and the results kind of agree. Sans any beauty effect, it's the lens that gives the skin its naturally soft look without going overboard. Where Xiaomi is most proud of, however, is its video capture capabilities. The Snapdragon 865 chipset found on the phone can capture 8K video with the new Spectra 480. So if you're the type who likes to vlog or experiment with cinematic video on your phone, the Mi 10 Pro is perfect for that. It comes with eight classic movie filters and can shoot in 235 to one aspect ratio. Again, I don't have any travel videos to share, but instead, here's an attempt at a cinematic hand washing video shot with a Mi 10 Pro. So, is the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro your gadget match? That's a tough one. Xiaomi used to represent the best value for money phones that you could buy for many years. It made its name by selling great phones with top of the line specs for several hundred dollars less than its competitors. That's just not the case in 2020. In China, the Mi 10 Pro starts at just under 5,000 yuan. Converted, that's roughly 715 US. Last year's Mi 9 cost nearly half that price. And when it launches in Europe later this month, it's actually going to be just as expensive as every other flagship smartphone. Leo in Germany asks, is it worth the price? Great question, and I spent a lot of time thinking about how I could properly answer it. By merit alone, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro has earned its stripes. It's good enough to be compared to the Huawei P40 Pro and the Galaxy S20 Ultra. But speaking of phones that cost more than a thousand dollars, part of what you're paying for is the prestige that's associated with a particular brand name. When I ask, what phone do you own? You can say, it's an Apple, it's a Samsung. I don't think Xiaomi has the same ring to it just yet. If you ask me, this phone should have retailed for 849 euros. That way, it would have been easier for reviewers like me to recommend it, to say, go out and buy this phone. It offers the best for less. Last year, someone from Xiaomi asked me, what would it take? What would our next phone need to be for it to become your daily driver? My answer, for a space in my pocket, it has to have an excellent camera. This year, Xiaomi delivered. And now that its camera is able to truly go head to head with the best of the best, it's really the first time that its impressive spec resume matches real world experience. But I guess it still doesn't answer the question. Is it your gadget match? Well, let me address Xiaomi fans first. Those who are thinking of upgrading from the Mi 8 or 9. This phone is a worthy upgrade. But considering how much you paid for your old phone, you need to ask yourself, does your brand loyalty mean enough for you to dig deeper into your pockets to get this one? Or if you're at least considering it, if you're willing to spend $1,000 on a phone, would you still buy a Xiaomi phone? Or would you consider a phone that has a more prestigious brand name that if for anything else will up your street cred, if not, come with a higher resale value? These are questions I can't answer for you. For everyone else looking for an alternative to the Galaxy S20, which by reputation is the world's best Android phone, this is definitely a contender. An equal, maybe, and in some respects, maybe even better. It's got top of the line specs, good battery life, super fast charging, great audio and camera performance. 
you name it. The biggest differentiator for me is Xiaomi's feature-rich MIUI 11. You'll either love it or hate it. And if you're on the side that loves it, then I think we have a winner here. Last question is from Gant from Malaysia. He says, I'm more curious about the regular Mi 10. Which one is worth it? On paper, the Mi 10 and Mi 10 Pro are actually very similar. Both have the same powerful internals and the same 90 Hertz AMOLED display, but they differ greatly in terms of camera hardware, which is exactly what we liked about this phone. Now, I haven't used the Mi 10 personally, so I can't say for certain, but it does seem that that 200 euros more for a better camera might be worth it. The Pro model also charges faster, but I'd argue both will still get you to a full charge in under an hour. And that was our Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro unboxing and review. A video that really was supposed to come to you as early as February, where the phone was supposed to launch at MWC 2020. Of course, things happened, and I hope wherever it is that you are, you are healthy and safe. For more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post a new video. Follow us on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.